Um, let's bring the meeting to order. Thank you. The uh, next item of business would be the uh, review of the minutes and uh, approval, not approval, edits. If everybody's comfortable, just need a motion to approve. Second. I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Seth. Second. All right. Moving along. Um, Sorry, I had to. My husband was asking me something. I'm trying to get out the door in the car. Sorry. No, 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 no,
and active transportation plan, which should be happening next year. I can't say it will, but it ought to be happening next year. So it appears that we, the timing of this is uh, amazing. <laughs> um, you know, we're, they're not really projected to hit our, our borders till 2026, if my memory serves me well. Um, and even with Dormont, there's time. Uh, they're looking at 2025. And let's be honest, is any construction project has delays. So you could probably tack on <laughs> a little cushion even to that schedule. So the way it looks now, that letter is going to be going out, I assume, today. And they already acknowledge they're going to start the work already. They're not waiting for the letter. I mean, that's how emphatic the our state reps were like, don't sit on this, roll. So they are, um, but the formal letter will go out today. Um, I believe they said it was about a three month process about to get to encumber uh, and a consultant just with the contract discussions, framing the scope, all of that type of thing. Then potentially uh, another three to four months for the actual work and then uh, you know the presentation to the communities and, and so forth and so on. So um, looking at that, you know, we're looking at six to eight months um, well within the parameters of having an impact for uh, whatever we want to do. Um, and we'll know by December, you know, the funding situation for the uh, active transportation plan. Dormont has already assured us that they're ready to go. They'll find the money for their participation in this. And I'm going to go out on a limb. We have the money <laughs> to do this. So it's just a matter of it getting um, actually formalized by the commission's um, approval in the budget process, but um, that should sink nicely. So, you know, if we can sync this all up, we can begin the active transportation plan, right, as this analysis by PennDOT's going on. So I guess the, the way that I would sum this up, and then I'll shut up, is, um, you know, PennDOT's being a partner and not an obstacle so far, and that's huge. I mean, it was, I guess, one more, you know, just editorial comment. You know, I went in with very low expectations, and uh, or really no expectations. He was, was going to go in and see how this went and uh, and, and watch the watch the show. But it it, it quickly uh, became apparent that uh, that Pendot was willing to partner. Ben uh, from Dormont even mentioned that this was uh, the first time that he had been in a meeting with uh, Pendot, and it wasn't adversarial. Um, so it was a really really productive session. Um, and uh, the commissioner was there, and I, I don't want to speak for him, but, um, I, you know, that, that's my take of it. Yeah, I'll just say that um, I was, I, as I think I've said to many people you know, over the last few years, you know, adopting the complete streets policy was the first step, and I really didn't believe that we would get pinned on the table about the Route 19 corridor for five to ten years. Um, the fact that they are coming to the table now uh, is surprising. Um, but uh, it is very welcome. Uh, the fact that they, frankly, even brought up PRT um, that, and recognizing that this is a corridor study that needs to take into account, you know, various modes of transportation through the, you know, through the communities, um, was very compelling. And yeah, and I, I just want to go back to kind of the, the why, right? Yeah, you know, because this change. On this scale, right? If it, it's even contemplated, you know, creates a lot of angst. Uh, but I am constantly getting safety concerns crossing Washington and Uptown. Um, I am constantly, you know, getting people saying it's not safe. Um, but it's not just about safety; it's also about the economic vitality of our business district um, and the value of our homes. Right, the more accessible our uptown is, and the more walkable it is, the more economically vibrant it is, and the more, frankly, our home values go up. Um, this is a 30 year play, right? These things don't change overnight, uh, but, and, and PennDOT is a huge, you know, kind of piece of this whole puzzle. So the fact that they're even willing to have the conversation, yeah, is very encouraging, um, long way to go. Uh, but um, a, a huge step, um, and I'm really excited. Frankly, I, I told my wife uh, yesterday evening that uh, that was probably the most impactful meeting I've had as a commissioner, um, yeah, overall. So I was really excited about it. 
And they're paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, uh, Dan, uh, Representative Miller uh, was pretty um, hardline. Yep. I, I think that's a good word to put it to depend on, you know, about how much is this going to cost? All right. You know, we'll find you the money. You know, we're, we're doing this, you know, get, you know, so they start ballparking numbers and whatnot. But, um, you know, so for the study, at least, you know, which, you know, I'm just, I, this is a, a number that's not solid. I'm just making this up, but it, it's probably at the minimum going to be a buck 20 to buck 60, uh, maybe about buck 80. Um, we definitely don't think it's going to be a quarter million. That was one of the numbers thrown out. It's not going to be that much, but, um, you know, it's a significant investment, but an important one. And, uh, it, and PennDOT, it's their road. <laughs> uh, they're going to, uh, Make that investment. So that that's another point I think of note that uh, they have skin in the game as well, uh, you know, cash on the table. So um, yeah, it was kind of mind blowing actually. Um, you have to pinch yourself because if anybody has ever been in a meeting with PennDOT, um, yeah, it's not normally that smooth. <laughs> Can I, what do you have yes. at the end of that study? What do they give you? Yeah, it's. It, it, in the simplest way to answer that is um, a yes or no letter to a road dial. So like, and I'll dial back maybe about 10 years ago, we made the same request to PennDOT to do an analysis of, of Washington Road um, uh, to, Co uh, to Cochrane, I believe, or maybe it was Mount Lebanon. Mount Lebanon. And um, so they, they performed this task and uh, came back to us with a, a, a hard no letter to exploring a road diet. It was it was it was not going to happen. Don't don't pursue this. Um, so this is going back. A lot a lot has changed in ten years. We're also expanding the scope of the area quite a bit, um, and uh, so it's it's a it's a refreshed look and a refreshed um, opinion of yes or no on doing this. But a lot has changed at PennDOT too. So they have their own complete streets policy. Um, they're, they've, they've, especially in the eastern part of the state, PennDOT's, you know, been a lot more uh, progressive and, and innovative with these types of things than they have been over this side of the mountains. Um, so it's it's just there's been a bit of a cultural change there. So a lot's changed in 10 years. So basically what we anticipate is that it's going to come back with, yeah, you can do this uh, project. And then, again, they're partnering. So instead of roadblocking and just saying no, and then they move on to the next asphalt project, um, we become, and that and the commissioner emphasized this too yesterday, you know, we need to be partners on this. And, um, you know, and that's that's what we anticipate. So, but that's- it, it, well, In short, right, they're going to do a technical analysis right. for all the flows, yeah. right, basically north and south through the corridor to understand, right, the, the, because again, their priority is to a certain extent throughput, yeah. right? They're, they're, they're worried about people in the south getting to where they need to go a lot more people right more right and, well exactly and that's and 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 that's the balance that that they, they have to say well sure. we have to serve the south and make sure that the flows are happening where are we on the other hand are going to be more on the side of they can use the freeway if they want to go to Pittsburgh, yeah, right. There's but, but there's got to be a balance there. So they're going to do the technical analysis to say what is the flow. That kind of is that foundation of that discussion of how does PRT become part of the conversation, right? How do we change traffic patterns? Yeah. How do we encourage you know use of light rail and therefore you know and part of it is right. It's it's the balloon exercise, right? You squeeze one area, you need to build capacity in another area. PennDOT is only one piece of the puzzle, but they're that, they're you know, yeah, they're the exercise. big player in that whole exercise. So they're going to look at just the technical analysis and to Eric's point, say yes or no. Do they know what the plan is? And now they're analyzing the... There, there's no the specific, there's yeah, no specific but, plan. It's yeah. right now, it's just like, there is a road. Yeah. We want to narrow it. it yeah, in short, the short way yes. of thinking about it is we want to narrow it. Yeah. Um, and they were going to say, what does that mean for the, our traffic flow expectations yeah. okay. and the patterns that will result? Um, right. Um, so that it's 
It's a, it's a, it's a technical analysis, I, I would say. Yeah, yeah I mean, sure. Because, I mean, it's looking again at the intersections, intercept points, flow onto. Yeah. You know, think of it. Think of it as a river of tributaries. So yeah. they're also looking at, you know, and. Uh, Washington Road 19 being, you know, uh, the Allegheny River, you know, it's looking at, so it's looking at all of that. And, and so there is no plan. That's where the active transportation plan next year comes in. So this uh, at least allows, this will give us a partnership with a, a huge actor in this corridor, the Arvin corridor, um, and give us the green light to proceed with the actual uh, analysis engineering and design of what that could mean. And there's lots and lots of different ways to, to address traffic calming and, and, and these types of issues and multimodal transportation issues. And we are, and they end up said it over and over again, because it's the, an absolute fact. <laughs> We're probably one of the best multimodal corridors in the region, you know, just because of all of, the one thing we're missing is the pedestrian element. And we've got the light rail, we've got the cars. Yeah. Um, where we're where we're bailing the communities are um, with safe passage for our, our for the pedestrian and the cyclist and the scooter guy and the, all of that. So um, you know that's that's the missing link, and that's this is a significant step on building that chain. Yeah, yeah. That narrowing has helped that. That yeah, that I mean, that's the easiest way to look at traffic calming. It's it's you know creating either physical or uh, psychographic or, or you know optical notions that that slow you down. Um, it can be signalization. It's complicated. That's that's why you bring in the subject experts on it um, that can look at the data, look at the information, have community discussion, um, and make proposals that then ultimately would go. To the elected bodies for, for to actualize, yeah, yeah, said. Hey, this this is all great information, and, and I'm really excited to hear it. I've, I've actually talked with Ben a little bit yesterday. Um, this has been bubbling for a long time. I think everyone in the room knows that to some level, but this started with not started, but. PRT did a project studying the Dormont Junction Station and the walk shed really demonstrated the limitations of access to that light rail station. I heard somebody, I, I rode or had a meeting with somebody the other day that lives in Brookline. It's like, I didn't even know there was a station at Dormont Junction. And, you know, Brookline and Beachview are not that far away. You know, they Brookline doesn't have its own light rail. Um, you know, improving connections from Brookline via Pioneer to Dormont. There's, there's so many connected elements to this. It's really great. And you know, that that started bubbling. Dormont had it in their comprehensive plan before. I know Mount Lebanon had it in this comprehensive plan. It's taken a lot to get to this point. So I'm, I'm excited to see what comes out of the design. And I, I would encourage Mount Lebanon and Dormont to be critical of the design. And if it comes, like you said, to a funding, you know, if they've committed funding, I don't know if we need to seek out more funding or how that works. Um, but you can certainly look farther back historically to when Mount Lebanon widened Washington Road and moved the buildings back. That might not have been the right move, but at the moment it was a different time. But there, there's repairing some 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 things that have changed in this corridor and bringing it back to an actual main street from Dormont to Mount Lebanon. Like you said, economic vitality. There, there's so many variety of features here. So excited to see that. I know um, the vibrant uptown project was limited from a little bit of accessibility because you weren't ad addressing any of the right of way. But this can be a chance to to really even improve upon what's the basis of vibrant uptown as well. Absolutely, yeah, and that's why we've always positioned that as phase one or something of that nature. It's just you know it's it's getting one piece of that puzzle, um, some foundational work done, and then you know now we're moving on to other phases. This being a, a critical one and having PennDOT at the table is a big deal. And I just you know in terms of funding, next steps, um, at least as long as the Two folks that were sitting there yesterday, or in where, where they are, um, you know, it, it also appears that we have uh, strong partnerships with our representatives, both in the House and Senate. Um, so when we go after multimodal funds, I mean, uh, Senator Fontana was very, very. Uh, it, both Dan Miller and uh, Senator Fontana were instrumental in getting a significant amount, seven hundred fifty thousand dollars of CFA multimodal funds uh, for the vibrant uptown project. Uh, and I get the sense 
uh, that they will be strong partners again when we're at a, a, a point to, uh, again, actualize whatever plans are developed. But um, it, we had good partnerships at the elected representative level, PennDOT level, local uh local level i mean that's and then of course board authorities the set knows that i mean they were they're, they're they're involved in this big time so i mean you've got all allegheny county uh planning uh and Gorik, who, uh, Gorik, who lives here in mount levin and also very instrumental in all of this their their support i mean we've got county local state i mean we've got the trifecta there so um uh, we're good to go and and this is this is a change at the federal level too. And, you know, it doesn't look like we have a chat, but it, just uh, on the um, the Federal Highway Administration says a road diet is possible, a low cost safety solution when planned in conjunction with a sim simple pavement overlay and the reconfiguration can be accomplished at no additional cost. Typically a road diet is implemented on a roadway with a current and future av average daily traffic of 25,000 or less. And I'm pretty sure most of the segment is under 25,000. It is. Uh, and a four lane to three lane road diet conversion. And that means it's essentially four lanes in, in Dormont for portions of the day. There's parked, there's inconsistency at the cross, but even the, the Washington Road portion is four lane. So four lane to three with either turning lanes or different things can result in 19 to 47% reduction in total crashes. That, that's a big number for a relatively simple change. So. This is this is changing at the federal level from a language standpoint, and, and there's good stuff here. So uh, excited to see the process. Does anyone else have any additional questions? I mean, the bottom line is good news and more to come. But I mean, it, it I I don't think I can uh, emphasize enough. Uh, this, this, it was it was a very you don't get many meetings like that. <laughs> so. Great. Yeah, I mean, I'll just say I'm super excited and super in support of this. Um, and if anyone's interested in other further reading, NACTO just came out with kind of an article about updating and modernizing the um, MUTCD guide. So that that's another kind of good thing that's happening across the, the whole nation to kind of support this sort of movement. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, it's, it, it, again, it, the timing could not be better. I mean, the stars really seem to have aligned, and, but stars move. Um, you know, uh, so we, you know, we want to capture this, uh, this magic and, and, uh, and keep things moving. Um, and we will do that. There's a, there's another update and, and Kate just reminded me, but it's the, uh, what's known as PROWAG or pedestrian facilities in the public right of way. And there's new guidelines that are going to be effective September 7th, 2023, but that's going to be critical for the streets department, the complete streets policy, the active transportation plan, but it, it covers basically everything. Um, you know, while many of our streets have curb ramps and sidewalks, those aren't exactly the ideal from accessibility standpoint. So more to come uh, there. I'm trying to get, I can share that um, to include in the minutes, Eric, but. Yeah, that, I would, yeah, because this, because this is a board and authority meeting, I think they have deactivated chats because, yep. you know, for the public that might watch this at a later time or, it would be watching now. Um, but if you want to send that to me, you know, some in some other you know, email or whatever, um, then we can uh, disperse that to the group and uh, incorporate it. Sounds good. And just uh, so, and then uh, just on this theme, before we move off, I had my budget hearing yesterday, or uh, not budget hearing, but budget meeting with our finance director and uh, active transportation is in my budget request. Um, it's going to stay with me, at least for now. Um, rather than move anywhere else. So um, I'll be uh, the Sherpa on that uh, till December when uh, it goes before our commission. Um, but I'm ready. To, uh, I, so that's 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 good to go. So we'll, as that progresses, um, you know, at least in my opinion, I'm going to um, start preparing um, basically a scope, you know, so we get closer to the end of the year so that we, uh, you know, beginning next year can just uh, launch, you know, get into that and not, uh, not waste any time. So that's really all I have for mobility, unless anyone has any questions or... Okay, cool. Um, economic vitality, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be brief here. Um, the 
we were looking to have uh, get, bring back the networking sessions. You know that I'll have to work with the partnership on that. Um, but we'll, we're looking to do something here in the fall. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, the design guidelines are pretty much done. The final final report, final product uh, landed in my inbox this week. I shared that with uh, currently myself and. Pardon me, Bill Callahan, who's on the design committee, and some of you may know, um, are reviewing that. It should go to the partnership board. It will go to the partnership board next Friday uh, for their review and final approval. But that that's pretty much is done, um, which is good news. Then we'll we'll draw down the grant. But um, what that means is we have design guidelines now, and not only design guidelines, but again, uh, some recommendations to the municipality. Um, on how to improve various uh, zoning ordinances within the commercial districts uh, to make it uh, to, to make them a 21st century. Uh, so it'll go to the board. The commission's going to see it at some point in the near future. It's set up to be a discussion session item. Um, so you know, there's more to come on this. But um, I'm also speaking of budget. I put in the budget uh, a number. Uh, I put in 50000 for uh, uh, seeding a local facade grant program. We'll see where that number ends up. Um, it's just a way to try to kickstart this so we don't have to wait for state dollars, which I won't get too much in the weeds on. But let's just say if, you know, the state program is very Byzantine and we're not going to be able to get any facade grant money into Mount Lebanon through the Commonwealth at the earliest it would be uh, 2025. <laughs> so, you know, I'm hoping that we can, you know, start some projects or help some folks out prior to that. Um, so we'll see where that goes in the process. It's going to be a tough budget year. I'll say that. So, um, you know, we'll see where things go, but, um, I did, did put in some dollars into uh, my budget, um, to kickstart and see that, uh, a local facade grant program. So that's okay. done. Yeah. Oh, please. So just, so just for clarification, the design guidelines are a partnership document. They're not a municipal document. They will, the partnership, once they approve this, will present in discussion session the overall concept that they are undertaking. Um, out of that, there will be zoning recommendations, a separate document that has specific recommendations for the commission to consider for adoption. Is that correct? That is correct. I think we need to be really clear. Yeah, this is a partnership document, exactly. And uh, the facade grants, the commissioner is absolutely correct. They're, they're, they're the consultant through the partnerships, the contract with the partnership uh, was tasked with and asked to look at best practices in central business districts um, so that our our zoning is in line with best practice for 2023, not 1973. So that's that's where we're at. And uh, the, the, the municipality can accept, not accept. I mean, whatever it is, there's gonna be discussion, but we wanted to take, the partnership wanted to take this opportunity uh, while we had these subject experts in house uh, to, to make these recommendations for consideration. So there's a process to it. It's not, you know, it's not like we're gonna make a, a Presentation of the commission and discussion session, all of a sudden a uh, radical change ensues. There, there's, there, there will be a process um, to it, but um, bottom line is we have a document now uh, that the partnership funded uh, with help from a grant from PHMC um, to move the ball. So they'll provide design guide. So these design guidelines will be finalized, presented, then you do go to the zone. Can you talk zoning? Yeah, there's zoning right in there. Yeah, you know, so the design guidelines are not a municipal thing, right? right. They're a partnership. They're a thing. partnership thing. So that that will facilitate the partnerships encouraging property owners and businesses, yeah, right, to follow guidelines. Right. Here's here's the best practices, right? And we're going to help support you do that. Um, then, right, and my expectation or my hope, Eric, is that there will be specific sets of recommendations presented to the commission that say here are the zoning changes yep. that we want to see 
these this is the specific language we want. Something um, has to happen for the design. No, no design got design guidelines is, is done. Okay. Right. And think now, of it as an addendum, it's an appendix to the design right. guidelines are a standalone uh, document for the use of the design committee of the partnership upon reviewing a facade grant application. And could be implemented yeah. whether zoning changed or not. Well, so long as it conforms to zoning. Yeah. They can do whatever they want. Right. So you can, if you see how they're interrelated, I say, yeah. you know, so yeah. we want the best possible designs, but our ordinance doesn't always allow for that. Signage is always the, that's the lowest hanging fruit of example. So our signage ordinance is really, a, really horrible. So I'm just going to be blunt as I have been, I think, in every meeting um, about that. So, you know, this is making a recommendation. So that's an appendix to the main document, which is really a, um, a guiding document for the, uh, for the design committee and property owners and business owners if they make application because it, it's a grant. You're not guaranteed this, right? So there's a process to it. The design guidelines are, you know, sort of sets the table for expectations of what you need, what one would need to do to get the grant. Gotcha. Does that make sense? Yes. It, it, it is a grant from the partnership. Right. The, fun, the funding that Eric is asking for essentially would be to help seed a facade grant program, right? Okay. Right. That ultimately is going, well, at least in my opinion, when we're, we're, I, maybe we're not quite there yet, but in my opinion would be, you know, we're, see, we're help seeding their facade grant program that they administer, right? right. right. Yeah. Because all we're doing is saying, you've got to follow the zoning guidelines. You, you have to follow these rules, but we're helping them get kick-started a program that might be more expansive in terms yeah. of you know, what they want to get the money is above and beyond the zoning requirements that we have. Is that unusual? No, that's that that's very much that the structure. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I mean, a lot of communities have their own pot of funds for facade renovations. And we were not there yet because we haven't had design guidelines. But we do, but they're they're ancient. I mean, I think they're written in hieroglyphics. I mean, they're very uh, old. So um you know, th this is a, a, you know, fresh, actual live document, you know, that can be used um, in the partnership um, is considering and looking at or beginning to think about how do we uh, create our own uh, source of revenue to fund this facade grant program. Because again, the state has a facade grant program, but over the years, it has become more and more difficult and onerous to, to get those dollars. And oftentimes, I would not recommend property owners to go for it. And again, I don't want to get too much into the weeds, but if a project's over a certain threshold, then prevailing wage kicks in, which then elevates the... It, 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 and you have to wait. So they, like I mentioned, if you for the state money, I have people right now, I right now that want facade money. What I have to tell them is, hold on to that project till next July. Submit all your information. Then I'll submit that by August 31st of next year. I'll let you know in December if it's approved, and then you can start your project in January. No business or property owner wants to hear that. <laughs> so, you know, that's where the local, and also the local source of funds, should we be able to secure them for next year, also will allow the partnership to have some money in, in pocket. I don't want to say kick the tires, but start the program, get it going, you know, and, and, you know, have some experience and, and get, get that kind of get it up and running, right? At the bottom line. So, so, but that's where we are with that. Um, and then um, I'm going to be working with uh, the Quattro Bonsi on the scope of services for the second phase of whatever we're calling uh, the next phase up here, which is re related. It's called Vibrant Uptown 2 currently, but we're going to be changing that. Um, but again, that, that grant, um, I'm going to be working on a scope of services for that. Um, and get that rolling here shortly. But that's looking at Carse Way, Clearview Common, uh, some of the areas of sidewalk that we expanded for placemaking type things. We're already underway um, with uh, a, a grant that will be submitted next week, next week, <laughs> um, <laughs> for uh, for a public art installation project. It's pretty exciting. So, I mean, we're already kind of starting with some stuff, but the planning for other things uh, will begin shortly and wrap up by June of next year. Um, that's all I have under that. 
Any questions? When are the trash cans, bike racks, and benches going to be in? Uh, they were to ship. They're supposed to ship next week. So within a month. <laughs> How long's a piece of string? I, you know, I mean, they're supposed to ship next month. That's all I know. So, I mean, those were ordered months and months ago. So, so hopefully, yeah. I mean, once they, once, trust me, nobody. Our public works director does not want a bunch of trash cans, recycling cans, and bike racks sitting on the public works yard. So they'll be, uh, they'll, they'll they'll hit the streets uh, once once those are arrived. So it, it remind me the the bike racks. Mm -hmm. Are they like a fixed install bike yes, rack? Absolutely. And where are they going? I would have to go back. I don't. I I'd have to go back to the plan. Uh, the the Quattro Bonsi um, mapped out designated where spaces. designated spaces. And these are um, branded bike racks. You know, they're not just the, the hitch style. They're, uh, they were designed, obviously, for their function, which is to lock a bike to. But they were also designed that you could install public art into them. Um, so the easiest way to think of it is there's a, a medallion type piece that could be switched in and out with other things. So currently right now, my recollection is it has the sort of the Mount Lebanon logo or something like that. It has some kind of branding uh, panel there, but it's designed that that panel can be uh, switched out for, you know, it could be a, a, a cedar tree or, you know, whatever, right. you know, use your imagination. But um, yeah, I, I don't remember the number. Currently, we don't have any racks on the street because we've removed them. Uh, we do have a bike corral down on Parsway. Um, people are already strapping their bikes to the light poles. Um, and I, and my guess is we're, we're going to want more bike racks at some point. I think we'll, we'll start off with what was recommended by the subject expert, but my sense is we'll probably want more. <laughs> uh, that's just my notion. And then there's some discussion about adding some bike parking to one of our garages too. Uh, we actually had a request from the high rise closest to the municipal building. They're seeing a lot of younger folks move in there. That building pretty much has been a retirement kind of tower. Uh, most of the people there are 55 and 65 and over, uh, but a lot of younger people are moving into those condos and they have bikes and they don't, they want to park them in the garage. So we actually had a request for that. So we're, we're taking that under consideration and, and looking at that, but um, I think we're going to need more bike parking uh, moving forward. I, you know, almost guarantee that, but you should start to see that populating the street in the next couple of months, next month or two. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, well, that goes in nicely to Vibrant Uptown. I mean, we're pretty much done. Um, anybody that attended the Uptown Unveiled party, thank you. I think it was a really uh, nice success. We had uh, uh, thousands of folks come out through the course of the day. I don't have an exact number, but police and fire felt that we had three to four or 5,000 people throughout the course of the day, which is a pretty solid number for a Saturday afternoon. Um, so we had a good time for that, but um, there's still work obviously being done, but that's wrapping up as well. Um, so the last actual piece of the project above and beyond a punch list item items is the front of this building. So uh, the railing that needs to be installed, um, from what I gathered, is shipping, it's either, I think it's arriving today and will be installed next week. So that means the front of our building ought to be reopened by next week, which is really the last nail in this coffin. Um, but there's still work to be done. So they have, um, they had a punch list item somewhere of almost like a hundred different things that they needed to fix. <laughs> and right now I think they're down to about 48. Um, so there's still work to be done. And that, you know, that's everything from just little tweaks to um, things in the planners to caulking to patchwork here and there, repairs to some of the property owners to um, some concrete slab work that was uh, less than stellar. So there might, there probably will, there, well, there probably, no, I'm 99% sure there's going to be slab replacement in a couple of areas due to spalding and other things. So. Uh, we're not completely uh, in the port here, but we're we're pulling in, and we can we can see the dock. So we're 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 well well on that way. So um, we're we're pretty much done. Um, but you'll still see some work happening, probably till October, um, and then you will not see a flat check truck. <laughs> That's me knocking on this. 
faux wood. Um, again, so any any questions on that? Okay, cool. Um, commercial districts updates. Um, there's. I'll start with um, we have some good news that I probably can't talk about yet happening over um, near Banksville, uh, the old barn, the old Rollier's barn. So the, there's there's going to be some some things happening there shortly. Um, I don't think we're in a position to to release that information, uh, but uh, you will be seeing uh, what I consider to be a, a very very good use for that space uh, very shortly. Um, so that's that's good news. That's a very uh, visible vacancy that we've had for many a number of years now since Art Smith's left that will no longer be a vacancy. Um, I don't know if Elise is signed yet, but um, where Paper Rain had been, and prior to that it was Pittsburgh Popcorn Company, and I won't go back any further than that. Um, uh, they're going to be, that's just right over here by Poco Loco. Um, that that has been leased. Um, that's a retail uh, establishment. Very excited about it. Been trying to get this uh, lady in here for some time and uh, making good progress on that. It's, it will be retail. And uh, if, let's just do it this way. If you have any four-legged friends, uh, you're really going to enjoy this place. So um they're getting ready to uh execute that i'm not sure if the lease is signed but from all the activity from this week i expect it either has been or eminent it's eminent um again i've already mentioned this final remains is moving into uh the space where you're invited had been that stationary shop uh there's still there's been activity in the pnc spot but no you know there's been bites but but we haven't hooked anything yet um, so that is what that is. Uh, Needle and Bean has opened on Castle Shannon. Finally, they've been getting some nice, uh, positive press and local media. Uh, the guy is a coffee purist, so don't go in there and expect a bubble gum, grapefruit flavored latte. I mean, he's you know he's more <laughs> a traditionalist. You know, you don't go in there expecting a milkshake kind of coffee drink. Um, and they sell records, but uh, he's doing some really cool stuff over there. So if you get a chance, uh, swing in this weekend. Uh, that's right across from Calientes. Uh, so that's now uh, has the open sign on. Uh, the Corner Pub is making progress, whatever they're going to call them. So I can't remember the name of it now because it's been so long, but they're making progress. They've submitted plans. I'm trying to think if there's anything. Does anybody have any questions? It's probably the easier way to do it than me sitting here rambling on. Lots of good stuff. A lot of the vacancies you see now are not vacancies. Um, they're they're there's work in progress. So that, that's really all I I have. Um, I just would uh, I guess the only question I have is how do you want this group to work with the budget cycle uh, or? Is there sort of any budget planning out, outside of the active transportation plan? Is that sort of our only item? Uh, I think? Yeah, so that, that's a great question. One, show up and support me um, in this process. So the next step is uh, our finance director will pull together all the all the numbers from all the departments. That'll be submitted to Keith McGill, the manager. The manager will uh, spend many hours going through that and creating the, the manager's recommended budget. Uh, which will then be presented to the commission for their consideration. And then the uh, in November, I don't know if the dates have been set yet, but uh, usually November, I think it is, then the budget hearings began. So the, the three things that I have in the budget specifically are the active transportation plan, um, a, uh, you know, the uh, facade grant, and then I, of lesser concern to me, but I'm still interested in it, is I put in for something what I'll just call like a passport. If you've ever been like, like it's modeled on like a poor tour that's be, being done in the Laurel Highlands. It's, it's it's basically you get a little booklet, you go to businesses, you get stamps, and you get a prize. It's it's really just a, a, a business incentive type of thing. I, I threw it in the budget to see if it would stick. And if it does, I think it's great. If it doesn't, I, you know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cry a river, but no parklets? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> No, not yet. We don't have a plan. 
yet. But um, so the yeah, so that's what I have in the budget. Uh, yeah, I, I'll just reiterate, um, not not to belabor this one, but it's uh, it I, by all accounts, this is going to be a tough budget year. There's lots of of uh, asks. Um, so if there are particular things that you are interested in, uh, tell your friends and come to commission meetings. We do them by Zoom. We take public comment. Um, get your get your peeps and say something, um, please. Um, especially if it's involving active transportation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that is my pitch. <laughs> Uh, but seriously, no, I mean, whatever it is, right? Uh, the budget process is really important and it, it, most people don't pay attention to it, but you want to know the priorities of the community, you look at their budget. Um, and if you want to have an impact on how you see the community change, have an opinion on the budget um, and tell other people the same thing. Um, you can jump up and down on Lebo complaints all you want, but until you say something at a budget hearing, it's, it's not, it doesn't count. Um, seriously, show up. Any, any meeting between now and final budget is completely valid to come in and say something about what your priority is and what you think we should be spending money on. And if you have any questions about any of the line items, it's, it's, so it's called an expanded level. Um, if you have any questions about those expanded levels, which are the three that, at least in my budget that I talked about, obviously reach out to me and I'd be happy to get into the weeds with you and discuss what it is. I mean, we've been pretty thorough about this active transportation stuff, but you know, if you have more questions about the facade grant and how that might work or what it is, you know, don't hesitate to call me or email or whatever the case is. That's all I have. So, I mean, unless there's something else, I'd say, if you want to make a motion to adjourn, we don't need a second. We just need a motion. Do we want to talk about September's meeting? Oh yeah, thank you. Duh. Um, thank you. Um, I'm not going to be here, so um, I'm going to be in DC. So if I don't know what you guys want to do, I mean, I've arranged if you'd like for Greg uh, Wharton to fill in for me, um, or we can pause in September. But I'll leave that up, frankly, to the commissioner and, and the council. It's not up to me, but I, I won't be here. I vote talk <laughs> and just email if we need to talk about things and, or, or decide later if there's something that can't wait, we could call a meeting, I guess, unless you have to notify people, but. And I can check in with Stacey, I can check in with you and Anna and the commissioner, you know, midway, you know, you know later in the month and just see what's percolating. I just, from my perspective, I don't really see anything of major import that you don't you're not already aware about um but you know again i it's not my call so whatever you know what I, you know we'll do whatever but i do have a contingency plan greg can staff the meeting and run it um so so where is there, uh, skip september Am I, just, you can just nod what did what did I can... skip no september i'm okay with that uh, I'm getting nods. I have, I see three nods. I see. I think I see four. I nods. see unanimous nod. Okay. <laughs> I'll put that in the minutes. Unanimous nod. <laughs> right on. Okay. Well, hey, thanks everyone. Um, have a great weekend. It looks like it's going to be beautiful. So good out there, and uh, go visit Needle and Bean. Do I need to make a motion to adjourn? I don't think we actually. Yeah, do, do that. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a meeting. All right. Thank you, everybody. Adjourned. Take care, everyone. Have a good weekend.